r slash ask reddit what company has lost their way history channel discovery tlc mtv etc reality tv really made these channels lose their way and it sucks because they used to be great animal planet is the one that makes me the saddest edit wow obligatory my first gold thank you kind internet stranger but all thanks aside ap really was what drove my passion for animals and it breaks my heart to see its state now i am humbled to see so many of my fellow redditors that share the same feeling was just about to say this I used to always watch Animal Planet and now I don't think there's a single show that I would ever consider watching. Tim Hortons used to serve a quality product. We actually now live in a world where McDonald's serves better coffee, mostly because they took the old Timmy's contracts. Came here to say this. It sucks that Tim's no longer serves quality coffee, but you snooze you lose. Just wish they weren't so strongly associated with Canada. The glorious downfall of Yik Yak. It had the potential to match the gravity of Snapchat and Instagram but they decided to bait and switch their product changing it into another generic social media platform. I used to use Yik Yak in college and someone posted they found two cats behind. IDK let's say building B. It's been a while. Building B. And I casually walked past building B that day. And there were two kittens running around. I have two cats now. Field turn 5 this year. I hope their names are Yik and Yak. YouTube for sure, went from trying to protect users to not even caring about most of them with a corrupt system. Had my channel for over 7 years, didn't have much there except for my subscriptions and favorite recommendations. One day out of the bloom they just banned me without even explaining why. Tried appealing. Felt like it was automatically rejected. Edit. Thanks for the gold. R slash bony tier edit. Thank you for the gold. TLC The Learning Channel. I remember watching real surgeries on TLC during high school and the first part of college. Watching that inspired me to become a nurse. I remember they were showing a CABGX5. Very complicated especially at the time heart surgery. When news broke that Princess Diana died. I kept flipping back and forth between CNN and TLC because as much as I wanted to know about her death and stuff. I didn't want to miss heart surgery. Where else are you going to go to learn about the lives of 600 pound people? Facebook. All you see anymore is tons of ads littering your feed with a few of your followers posts. Similar post to what you like is literally just thinly disguised ads. I hate it so much. Literally every other post on my wall that I go to to see my friends post his ads now. Half the time. My wall is literally only posts from pages I haven't followed. No posts from my actual friends at all. I have 150 friends. So it's not like I'm in a ghost town. It feels like the algorithm went from showing me things I like to trying to funnel me into liking more pages. I haven't posted anything in about 2 years and deleted basically everything I've ever posted. And took off all my personal information. Now Facebook keeps bugging me about adding more details to my profile. Duck off. Facebook. The people who need to know my home address and where I work already have that info. Stop asking for it. Etsy. It used to be about handmade, creative, artistic goods tools materials and so on. Now most shops you purchase from buy from overseas mass producers and ship you those items. The large scale businesses took over. The fees are bonkers. But the mass producers can afford it and still make a profit. Etsy is making hand over fist so as long as that's happening they don't care too much about their original business plan. You just reminded me of that from Boat Scandal where Etsy spotlighted a producer of supposedly handmade furniture made from old boats. Only turns out they weren't. I haven't bought from or trusted Etsy since then. As someone who sells on Etsy, lem tell you how infuriating it is to deal with all these fees. Listing fee. Transaction fee. Renewal fees. Jesus Christ is difficult to see how much I'm actually making. Sears. Roebuck and Company. Colloquially known as Sears, they were like the Amazon of their 20th century, absolutely huge and sold everything under the sun. Now they've closed stores everywhere and are basically bankrupt. Used to work at Sears, we constantly talked about the place going under. Store manager was delirious and all about that Sears pride. Place was gone in 4 years since I left. 
The only Sears remaining anywhere near me is a Sears parts and repair in a really bad area not too far away. But they seem to be thriving. People flock there to get parts and fix their shit. Since folks around here bought literally everything from Sears for decades. My 1987 craftsman shop vac needs a filter, they've got it. It's an area of both suburban and rural working class people who grew up being taught to fix their own stuff. Rather than call a repair guy or take the unit in for repair. Nope. Gimme the parts. I'll figure it out. Old school craftsman stuff was honestly awesome. And that parts and repair joint will last until the end of time unless whoever has the Sears rights shuts places like that down regardless of sales. Open bracket. Lack of parts isn't an issue since plenty of generic companies stepped up to make cheaper parts for generations worth of tools. John Deere in their computerized tractors that farmers have to illegally hack to repair. I heard on the Iowa Farm report about early 2000s John Deere tractors selling above the original MSRP because people want to avoid their new computer systems. Edit are you tired of pop music? Are you tired of politics? The Iowa Farm report would like you to know the price of cattle is down 7. 5 cents per pound. The East India Trading Company has really diminished over time. Things haven't been the same since Lord Beckett died. You have to understand. It was just good business. Ducking Nestle is literally evil. And the human piece of shit they have is their CEO. I live in a very mountainous region in Canada and I'll tell you. We have the best most cleanest tastiest water in the whole world emo. Until Nestle decided to build a factory and has been sucking out all the water in our aquifers and leaving gunk in our rivers. They suck up thousands of liters of water every day and pay nearly nothing for it. But what they do to my town is nothing compared to the shit they pull in third world countries. They've basically become a modern nightmare. Edit. I think they've changed some of their shady practices but I haven't been informed otherwise. Edit 2. My first platinum ever. Thank you guys so much. Wiki actually has a very clear list that I use to avoid Nestle products. You can search it for your country too. HTTPS colon slash slash. En. Wikipedia. Org wiki list of Nestle percent C3 percent A9 brands. They own a ton of shit. Like DJ Arneo. Really? California Pizza Kitchen. Hot Pockets. Stuffers. Butoni. Dryers. Drumstick. Hagen Das. NA. Etc. Really incredible their reach. It's BS. I think the better question is what companies haven't lost their way? Arizona Iced Tea. Still 99 cents. Actually, they changed industries from distributing beer to zero dollars. 99 drinks. 11.36. Dunkin Donuts used to be a donut shop but now they're just a coffee shop. I think you mean. Dunkin. Dunkin Donuts was the weirdest thing about my trip to New York. In New Zealand they're like Toblerone. Only found at airports or in very obscure locations. I had no idea that they replaced every should be a locally owned cafe spot in New York. General Motors. In the 1960s they had over 50% of American market share. And were widely considered to be the best car manufacturer around. Even in the 70s they still held over 40% market share. And still had a, mostly, good reputation. They originally built their success on having distinct brands to cater to different customers. Chevrolets were inexpensive. Pontiacs were sporty. Oldsmobiles were respectable middle class cars. Buicks were nice without being showy. And Cadillacs were the absolute pinnacle. GM's decline happened for two reasons. Badge engineering and failure to adapt to changing markets. Badge engineering. Designers started getting lazy. Instead of building different cars for different brands. They built the same basic car with the same engine. Transmission and body, with only the names and badges on cars being different. No reason to pay extra for an Oldsmobile or book when a Chevrolet was objectively just as nice. This damaged consumers' perception of the quality of GM cars, leading them to go elsewhere. Failure to adapt to changing markets, they built their business on big cars, and when small cars began to grow in popularity, they built half-asset small cars that were utterly terrible to try and push consumers into paying more for big cars. The end result was customers buying better small cars, which were usually Japanese imports. In fairness not all GM cars are bad, and the company has improved since they went bankrupt in 2008. 
but their decline was 100% their fault. Grew up in Detroit, multiple family members worked for GM, several for Ford, a few for Chrysler. This is spot on. I would add that the beginning of the end for GM was how they managed the Saturn line. Saturn had the potential to save GM from itself. They screwed that up so bad. Edit. Wow. My first silver. Thank you kind Saturn appreciator. True. The Saturn debacle was definitely a factor. I feel like that Saturn helped destroy Oldsmobile because they both were aiming for the same part of the market by the 2000s. Then Saturn went away. Which is a shame because it could have been a viable middle brand between Chevy and Book. Gee. My how the mighty have fallen. Things started going downhill when they changed out their vice president of East Coast television and microwave oven programming after the sale of NBC to Cable Town. Ah yes. Another man of culture. After reading these comments it's basically companies who strove to create a quality product worth consumers trust. But once they had that loyalty, they dropped it all. Companies. Caring about product quality and customer satisfaction customers. Trusting and appreciating the solid and honest work the companies were doing companies. The brand is established. Time to open the shares and decrease quality of products for excessive profit acquisition customers. Not cool. No more support or money from us companies. Pikachu face. Customers. Not cool. No more support or money from you see wish that actually happened. Victoria's Secret. It's very obvious nowadays that they are desperate to keep afloat and will take almost any measure to do so. They have tried. New Angels. Third party brand collaborations. Livy. Use of influencers. Massive sales. And even selling third party products. Swimwear. As well as pushing new fragrances. Cosmetics. Clothing etc. Despite their efforts. Sales continue to fall and Versus is left closing multiple locations across the US. Emo. They have strayed very far both from A. Their original brand identity and B. What the public wants out of Versus. They aren't quite doing either one and it shows. Not to mention their quality has tanked along with taste. It's shockingly difficult to find basic, simple, or even just tastefully branded items in the store. Yet instead of focusing on the core of the brand, Lingerie Intimates VSX, they choose to introduce new mediocre eyeshadows, lipsticks, lotions, athleisure dresses, etc, into the shop that nobody is asking for and having influencers like Jake Paul's ex-girlfriend promote them. I really do believe that specialization is best for them, but they keep straying away from their core products. I won't touch on their marketing methods, because there really is so much more that Versus needs to fix and the marketing is a surface level issue for them. If I could be in charge for a day, I would bring them back to basics and make sure the quality is right. The image of Victoria's Secret definitely shouldn't be a disorganized mess of a store with buckets of obnoxiously branded sale bras in a heaping pile. They also need to be more responsive to what the public wants out of Versus, and work to make a more cohesive brand image and reputation. Personally, I would stick to Intimates, Bra Underwear Slash Lingerie Sleepwear, VSX, their sport line, and a very limited amount of fragrances lotions. The idea is to hone in on what they are known for, and make it great again in terms of quality, design, and marketing. I would much rather have a small assortment of great items than a wide variety of average poor quality ones. I do hope they can get back on track. It's quite sad to have such little competition. Ari, Third Love, Savage X Fenty, and still be suffering as much as they are, purely due to their own shortcomings. Edit. Wow. This is my first time receiving silver or gold. I really appreciate the gesture. Thank you so much. I think their biggest issue is price. $70 for cheap. Shapeless lingerie. I could go to a department store and buy half decent lingerie for $40.50. Or a good lingerie store and buy quality lingerie for $70.80. Same with their clothing. Who pays $40 for a basic cotton jacket? A high price is okay if the quality is there. But their quality went to a ri down. After I bought an $11 pair of underwear that got shredded in one wash I was done with Victoria's Secret. Quality has gone down but prices haven't at all. From an inside perspective Starbucks. Edit. Wow. Thanks for the silver. It's my first one. Hello happy to see other partners former partners agree with me on this. 
I've been a partner for 4, 5 years now and it's just not the same company they've really stopped looking to their employees for guidance on what we think would be popular and the best ways to run the floor while also making customer connections. Also agree the second they ditched Tazo and the orange Valencia refresher it all started to plummet. Absolutely. I only worked there for about a year. But it's such a dreadful experience. I only worked there cause a friend of mine worked at a Starbucks a few years back and loved it. But so much has changed. At least at my location. Quality and connection has been replaced with speed. They put too much emphasis on breakfast sandwiches. And they even got rid of the coffee master program. I worked at Starbucks 2010 to 2014. I love the coffee aspect and the artistry associated, but the focus on food items and drive through times and printing stickers really killed the fun. At the end it felt more like working at McDonald's than a coffee shop. I quit a week before we instituted playbook if that gives any perspective. YouTube. I remember Nigahiga and Smosh competing for most subscribers on the site at one point. Remember Ray William Johnson was beating Nigahiga? Google. Don't be evil they said. Until they didn't anymore. Edit. Deleted thanks. Honestly I'm not so sure it was lost their way as got powerful enough to drop the facade. They are a company that 100% lost its way but I have mixed feelings about it. They started as this company that wanted to index every single piece of information in the world. So they rolled out this snazzy search engine. Now they are making smartphones and tablets and smart home devices which really have nothing at all to do with this original goal. My local Benahena got rid of the glory hole and I haven't been there since. I doubt it will be good for business. Reddit's been a little wonky recently. Recently. Yeah I agree. I've been using it for 6 years. From my perspective there was a turning point in late 2016 with the election, POW, and the rise of certain subreddits. Reddit is a lot more serious now. Less memes. Less banana for scale. I found a safe and cat tax references. It's becoming depressing like a Facebook news feed. Subway. WTF happened to my $5 foot long. Jared happened. Edit. Thank you kind stranger for my first silver. Inflation. Bruh. Lowe's. Worked there for 5 years. In 3 different stores. And man the stories I could tell you of underhanded practices. Horrible business decisions. And the need to be the blue home depot is so outrageously chaste to no end. It used to be a fantastic place where you could retire from and have great benefits. Now all they want is a new investment firm to not back out and are grasping at every straw they have to grasp at to just appear like they know what they are doing. They held out from becoming just another bog box retailer and that's why a lot of people love them and the tenured mature employees genuinely loved working there. Now though, I don't know very many people that feel like they have any sense of joy going to work or even job security at this point. At one point they were testing low bots to replace staff. It was so ridiculous they pulled them back out of the test stores shortly after. They also have the worst IT ever. Spending over 2 billion dollars on a new pose just to pull the plug and then after they scrapped it they rushed it into every store. All the while they couldn't actually implement it so the new pose only handles pick up internet orders so most associates can't even look up your online order as they only have access to the old system. It's caused so much headache and angry customers I can't even count and that's just the ones I witness from my position which didn't deal with front end operations. I could rant for hours but you get the idea. No clear direction and backwards thinking. We had a really weird experience with Lowe's. We ordered our washer and dryer from them in one order and paid with one card. They were coming from two different stores near us though. Seemed like one only had a the washer and the other only had a dryer. The day they're set to be delivered. One store calls and says they'll be there in 30 minutes with the washer. Great. The other store calls and says they couldn't process our payment for the dryer. It made no sense to me since the washer was fine and was in the same order. My husband ends up on the phone for 2 hours to sort it out with corporate because the store won't talk to us. It gets sorted and we call the store back and they tell us they are now out of stock of the dryer and can't deliver it. Did they sell our dryer in the 2 hours? Did they ever even have it? We ended up calling corporate back and spend another few HRS going from person to person. Eventually we get a dryer delivered from a third Lowe's. Two weeks later. 
I ordered a microwave online a few weeks ago after my current one kicked the bucket. The website indicated there was only one in stock, so I ordered it online to make sure it would be there when I arrived to pick it up. I went to pick it up literally 30 minutes later. The woman working the online orders at first said I arrived too fast so they hadn't had time to pull it. That's fine. I can't wait for someone or go grab it myself. Then she tells me a long diatribe about her lack of faith in their inventory system and they probably don't have any in stock. Next, she leaves for 10 minutes to track down the microwave and comes back with the exact microwave I ordered. Also, there were 3 other units on the shelf. So, a lack of confidence in the inventory accuracy was confirmed at least. Overall, I've found my local Lowe's to be only marginally less convenient than the closest Home Depot, but I can tell they are struggling with some really unnecessary inconveniences as employees. KFC. I remember as a kid the Colonel's chicken was actually quite good. Now it's just greasy and it's not the same as I remember. Edit. Thanks for the gold. KFC used to my family's big dinner out every month when we didn't have a lot of money, and I cherished every bite. I went back a couple months ago to try and recapture the magic, but it was just greasy crap. Really disappointed. Royal Farms has amazing fried chicken though. Macy's. It's a junk store now. Most of their locations are sad, ugly and depressing. Macy's used to be the fancy store you went to when you wanted quality clothing. Now it's the same crap everyone else has. Blizzard. I'm sure someone could tell me exactly what happened but they used to absolutely dominate PC gaming. To me everything started to go to shit around the release of Diablo 3. SC2 never really hit the stride that SC1 did. WoW used to stand head and shoulders above the competition. Warcraft spawned an entire different genre of games known as MOBAs. Hearthstone like Overwatch had an incredible start but languished from lack of solid patches expansions and what seemed like tone deaf developers. Diablo 3 has been one giant quagmire from the outset. What happened Blizzard? I miss you. Activision used to mostly let them run themselves because they were printing money, but there were always vultures within Activision that wanted to take over Blizzard entirely. The lackluster performance of HOTS, the utter failure of Project Titan, and StarCraft II's dwindling player base gave them the opportunity they needed to move in and take over, and our Activision policies are being applied to all Blizzard games and it's taking its toll. What company hasn't lost their way? Maybe Costco. They also show that you can pay your people a living wage and not treat them like shit and still be successful. Cadbury edit. Cadbury is insanely popular in India because they are affordable and widely available. Other brands, especially Amel, aren't available everywhere and Amel has more dark chocolate varieties than milk chocolate. The so-called handmade organic chocolate made by chocolatiers are insanely expensive and most don't even taste half as good as the 5 rupees dairy milk. I will buy dairy milk over these ostentatious products on any given day. Cadbury is studied as an example of what not to do marketing wise in every university in New Zealand. They went from one of the most trusted brands and products to the most hated in less than a year. Why is this? I'm not too familiar with Cadbury outside of those eggs. And since I'm in the US, those are only available for Easter. What did they do that was so horrible? Going from love to hated in 12 months is damned impressive. Craftsman. Black & Decker, Stanley, basically every old American tool company is now a shell of its former self. Dharma Initiative, they just got lost. Pyrex, try buying Pyrex, trust me, it's completely different. Two companies own the name, but only one owns the rights to the original Pyrex heat resistant glass. Unfortunately, the inferior Pyrex runs the market in America. While the superior Pyrex is sold in Europe, pretty sure you can still import though. It isn't even a surprise, you make glass using borosilicate and it'll have better heat resistance. You use sodalime and now it's basically consumer glass. SMH. EA. Two men in microtransactions, and the same Madden game every year since like 2010, just with updated rosters. Panera bread good serving sizes and price but now you can barley feed a chipmunk with their entire menu edit for anyone who wants the broccoli cheddar soup. There's huge ones in Sam's Club. It's overpriced hospital food. Blizzard. After ruining the Diablo franchise, they decided to make wow a mess. 
then went back to ruining the Diablo series a bit more. Yelp. It used to be reviews but now their extortionist practices make organized crime look tame. Amazon. It used to be a place to start a small business and now it sucks in so many ways. If your product is popular on Amazon they will copy your product and undercut you and run you out of business. Don't get me started on their god awful search algorithm. Facebook used to be fun and social now it is hot garbage. I guess most online companies suck more now than they used to. Sega. They lost their ability to make good 3D Sonic games. Your thirsts will never be quenched you frickin frick. McDonald's because they don't have a good dollar menu anymore. The value menu isn't really that great and most of the better stuff is still $3 plus. I don't want fancy touch screens inside. I don't want a healthy meal if I'm going there. I just want decent options from $1 to $50. $4.50 for 10 piece McDonald's nuggets is ridiculous when I can get a 10 PC at Burger King for $1. 50. Might as well get way better quality nuggets from Chick-fil-A if I'm going to pay around $5. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.